Okay, so here we go. I'm back after a long absence. I apologize <laughs> for not being around. Uh, you know, like like I worked for like a couple of weeks straight, and it was exhausting, just absolutely exhausting. So uh, I took a little bit of time off from doing pretty much anything that you know I normally do, and that included these videos. Like I'd even thought about doing them, and I'm just like I'm just too exhausted. To deal with anything right now, even opening action figures in front of a camera and talking about them, which is just like kind of the most basic thing that I do on YouTube. So, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to try to get caught up. I keep saying how I've got all this stuff over here I need to open and it's just piling up. You guys have seen some of it already, but I got this uh, uh, McFarlane Batman figure. It's based on the uh, Hush storyline so it's based on jim lee artwork it's a nice looking figure uh i've still got a uh, couple of more these more probably figures after this i've got uh, uh superpowers i've got a lot of stuff but uh got him today uh finally found him at walmart and uh, i pre-ordered green lantern on amazon like i did with uh all the rest of these figures and he kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and finally they just outright canceled them so apparently i allegedly still have a, a green arrow as a, a pre-order so supposedly a green arrow is going to be coming to me but i'll believe that when i get it at this point since apparently like uh amazon just decided to up and cancel my green lantern so what's the point of pre-ordering if they're not going to order enough to fulfill the pre-orders? Like, honestly, isn't that the point of, of doing a pre-order so that you can ensure that you get your item sent to you because you pre-ordered it so they should know enough to order for the people who pre-ordered? But apparently that's not how Amazon does things. So thanks, Amazon. In case you can't tell, I was being sarcastic. All right, but I did manage to find him at Walmart today. So even though I don't really have a whole lot of excess income to be dropping on stuff right now, I went ahead and bought him because he was the only one there, and I didn't want to miss out since apparently Amazon didn't order enough. I didn't want to take a chance on having to hunt all over to a bunch of Walmarts because I passed him up on a week when I was a little short on cash. I'll just have ramen noodles, a couple of meals this week, and that will get me caught up. Anyhow, uh, we got Green Lantern from the Mego 50th anniversary line. Got the nice sparkly sticker there. Got the world's greatest superheroes header at the bottom. I know it's weird to say header at the bottom, but whatever. That's what it is. It's at the top on the back. Uh, we got the cross saw artwork on the back, which we should be familiar with. We got Superman, Batman, Robin, Aquaman, Green Arrow, and Captain Marvel. Shazam, as he's referred to on this box, and as uh, uh, DC Comics prefers to refer to him as. I don't care what the lawyers say, this character's name is Captain Marvel. And in fact, he's got a new comic book coming out in which uh, they don't call him Shazam anymore. They don't call him Captain Marvel either, they call him the Captain. But we know what his real name is, don't we? Yes, yes, we do. So uh, on the bottom here, not a whole lot of interesting information, just a uh, Looks like a bunch of legal ease. I don't see any credits on this particular figure. <gasps> now, uh, Mego did not make Green Lantern back in the 1970s. But as you can see, he does have the item number uh, that he would have if he had been made back in the 1970s. So uh, a lot of fans were really happy to see the item numbers on the uh, vintage figures that have already been released. Uh, Superman, Batman, Robin, and Captain Marvel. All those had the item numbers around there. I forgot to mention it on the Flash. It's on his box, too. But, uh, but yeah, so you can see the Green Lantern's box is green because, you know, what else color are they going to make it? It's Green Lantern. You want a Green Lantern to be in a yellow box? He'd be stuck in there forever. He wouldn't be able to get out because green is his weakness. Or at least it was back when... Uh, Mego would have made this figure in the 70s. I think they got rid of that in the uh, post-rebirth 
post Green Lantern Rebirth, not post DC Rebirth, but uh, when they had the Sinestro Corps War and all that kind of stuff, like uh, around that time, I think they got rid of the Yellow Weakness because the Yellow Weakness actually came from uh, a fear demon named Parallax, who the Guardians had imprisoned inside the Lantern. And if you want to know more about that, I suggest you go and read uh, uh, the Green Lantern Rebirth comic that Jeff Johns and Ethan Van Skyver did uh, almost 20 years ago, I think, at this point. It must have been about 20 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been so long. But uh, but that was a pretty great comic. And uh, the, the, the regular Green Lantern series that followed afterwards that Jeff Johns wrote, that one wasn't so bad either. That's uh, worth, definitely worth checking out if you're interested in it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this, but I'm going to talk more about I forgot. These don't have tape on them. So I don't have to cut anything anyway. But uh, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about this box art and the design of it and everything. Uh, since this packaging is green, the insert in the back is green, but Miko was wise enough to use a very, very pale green, which uh, the more emerald green of his suit, uh, it, it uh, stands out on that just fine. And, uh, you know, it doesn't quite pop the same way that Batman pops on a pink background, but it's still the sort of thing where, like, I feel like he stands out enough that you don't have to worry about uh, GL getting lost in the, uh, the 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 background. So this is actually the second Green Lantern figure that Migos made. The first one was John Stewart. Uh, I don't have that one yet, but I do intend on buying it because uh, I, I do uh, I do very much like that character. So he's going to be worth picking up. Uh, one of these days. I hear that they had some problems with the costume that came with that, but apparently uh, Dr. Amigo has uh, replacement costumes that you can uh, get from him. Or, you know, if I could find an extra one of him, I could just I could just put Jon Stewart into the classic Green Lantern costume. But yeah, so there he is out of the package, and you can see that he has an accessory, which is he has power battery, so that he can charge his ring. And he does indeed have just Regular Batman boots, recolored in green. And I've discussed before how uh, technically these aren't, you know, just Batman boots. And originally they were intended as boots for a, a fisherman figure in the uh, Action Jackson line. But uh, they work perfectly for Batman boots. They work okay for Superman boots. Maybe not so great as, as Captain Marvel or Captain America boots. <laughs> Since they, they don't have the fucking ear flap on them. But uh, I think they work out quite well for Green Lantern's boots. They're not 100% accurate to them because, you can see, they come up at a point in the middle, like how Batman's boots do. But uh, I don't really mind so much. And like I said, I kind of feel like if they'd have done it back in the 70s, that's what Mego would have done. They would have been like, why are we even bothering to make new boots for this guy when they're just kind of the most plain boots I've ever seen? Just put some green Batman boots on them. Who cares? We got plenty that we already made from when we made Green Arrow. I better get that Green Arrow figure. All right, so here is his accessory, and if Green Lantern is going to come with any accessory, it should be a Green Lantern, shouldn't it? And uh, there's some uh, nice detailing to it. It looks very much like how the Lantern was drawn in the Silver Age comic books. There's not, like, over-extraneous detail to it, I would say. Like, a lot of times these days, you'll see, like, they'll put it, like, the top of the lantern. They'll put, like, a Green Lantern emblem on there. So there's a picture of a, the lantern on the lantern. So maybe that's a little bit overkill. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, branding is important. Batman will tell you this. So, yeah, that's, that's the Green Lantern. It looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And then Green Lantern himself. This is Hal Jordan. This will be... Silver Age Green Lantern. Where did I put my exacto knife? Oh, but oh, I didn't notice. I don't see my. I think I lost it. While I was sitting here blabbing away, it probably fell on the floor and I didn't even notice. Well, I got a pair of scissors and I just happened to have sitting here. I think I could snap that last one in its neck. I guess my scissors aren't very sharp at the very tip like that. So it did take a little bit of effort to get it out. And there he is, Hal Jordan, in all of his glory. Look at that head sculpt. 
that is a really great head sculpt. Much like the Flash, uh, who I have here. I have not painted his neck in yet, by the way, like I've been planning on doing. Uh, but you can see that, like, the way I had his shirt adjusted, it, it, it didn't sink down that much anyway, so it still looks pretty good. Somebody had actually asked me in the comments what kind of paint I used on the Flash, and I didn't want to answer him with, well, none, because I haven't actually done it yet. Uh, but if he does watch this video, I forget who it was who, who made that comment. Uh, I haven't painted it yet. So, but when I do paint it, my intention is to use uh, testers uh, enamel paint for model kits, tester, model, enamel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the, the kind you can buy at like uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Uh, I'm just going to paint in the torso a little bit at the top. Uh, I find with this type of plastic that's this hard kind of styrene type of plastic, I find the model kit paint sticks to that pretty well. And it, it dries without being too tacky on, on that type of plastic. So that's my intention for that. Uh, craft paint would probably work if you never touch it. But craft paint tends to chip off very easily on a plastic like that, I've found. So that's my advice to anybody who's, who's thinking about doing that. So I got them out of the, out of the box. And I don't want to remember how I broke the knee on hatchet like whatever that character's name was, Ernest P. Worrell or whatever. I know it wasn't Ernest. Don't at me in the comments being like, Ernest was Jim Varney. You take his name out of your mouth. <laughs> I loved Ernest. Ernest Saves Christmas was my favorite. I loved that movie. So I'm being very ginger with these joints because they feel very tight indeed. And I have seen where people have broken the joints on these figures because they've been too rough with them. And like once 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 they loosen up, they should be fine. But this one in particular just seems like really tight. So I'm just kind of gingerly just coaxing it. Don't force it, but you can coax it. It's very slowly, very gingerly. You see how I'm doing it. And you definitely want to have this this elbow be uh, articulated because that's where his ring is. So like you want to be able to get some some cool ring poses out of it. Like you can raise his fist up like that. And this is a, a new sculpt that they made. They, they made this one for the John Stewart figure. It's not new for this figure. It was new for John Stewart. But it, what I'm saying is this is a new sculpt that was made exclusively for Green Lantern. So it's got the rings sculpted into it. And you can see, like, even though, like, I'm having a hard time getting my camera to focus because it's just a camera on my phone, you can see that it's, uh, it's sculpted in the shape of the Green Lantern emblem. So it's got that on there. Let's try to get kind of like the Han Solo kind of pose. You know, Han Solo will have his blaster drawn and have his other hand out to the side. I think he looks really cool like that. Or you could have him posed like with the ring pointing up. Like he's giving you the finger. But he's not actually giving you the finger because he's got the ring. And that's like way more powerful than just the finger. So let's see how well he can hold his, his power battery. Get that put in his hand. Now, uh, most of the, the handle is fairly thin, and you should be able to fit it through his fingers fairly well. So what I would advise you do, what I just did right now, is uh, you, you put the hand, you put the, the, the handle in with that thin part through the fingers and then just kind of slide it so that the actual thick part of the handle, the part he's supposed to grip with is, is in his hand. And that's probably going to be the best way to do that. So then you can have him holding the lantern. And then we can have him, since he's got the ring and the lantern, we can have him actually charge the lantern. And how does Green Lantern charge his lantern or, or charge his ring? As he holds his ring up to the lantern and he says the Green Lantern oath and if you're watching this at home, say it along with me. In brightest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. And then he's, he's ready to kick some ass. So like the first Green Lantern action figure ever made, and the first one I ever had, was the Superpowers Green Lantern, which uh, I actually have a Superpowers Green Lantern right here, the original not that the McFarlane one, that's John Stewart, 
No, that's the original Green Lantern. I recently uh, acquired him for my collection. This was a, a, a I don't want to say a gift, but I consider it asshole tax. <laughs> Just put it that way. <laughs> so yeah, his his ring feature still works. So unfortunately, he does not come with a power battery that was uh, misplaced by whatever child owned this back in the eighties. I'm afraid, but. But man, that's a great action figure. I might do a, a retro review where I talk about this some because uh, it, it really is a fantastic action figure. And going all the way to the other end of the spectrum, I have uh, other than other than this Mego figure from the 50th anniversary, this would be the most recent Green Lantern figure that I've acquired uh, in my collection, as far as like when it was made, anyway. And that's the uh, McFarlane. Green Lantern figure that I've already done a review on. This was the two pack that came with uh, whatever Batman that was from the Dark Multiverse that was a Green Lantern. I forget. I, I, I wasn't into that storyline really. So the whole Dark Multiverse thing, I just wasn't my cup of tea. Sorry to anybody who enjoyed it. Uh, this wasn't my cup of tea. But, uh, but yeah, the Migos great. And look at the head sculpt. Man, that's fantastic. That is like just looking at it, it doesn't make me think of the artwork of, you know, like Gil Kane or Neil Adams or Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. That reminds me, I forgot to talk about the artwork on this package. And uh, I've got some things to say about the artwork on this package. Let me first get the insert back in here so I can make sure I keep that all together. And then we're going to discuss this. All right. So I am very divided on my opinion on this artwork on this package. And I have very strong opinions one way or the other. And we're going to discuss this right now. So uh, first of all, I want to say that nobody admires the artwork of Jose Luis Garcia Lopez more than myself. So I do not want to come across as me bad-mouthing that man. He's a genius. His artwork is beautiful, and it captures the, uh, the, the the power and the majesty and the mythic quality and the romance of the superhero. It, 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 it's, it's perfect superhero artwork. I do not want, want to, I do not want to be misinterpreted saying bad things about the work of an art, artist that, that I can't think of many artists that I admire more. Than this man, and in fact, the only guy I can think of offhand whose whose artwork I enjoy more than his, Mr. Neil Adams, who I think is is one of the greatest of all time, maybe my favorite comic book artist. Uh, but but Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, this man is up there, and uh, his 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 comics are are at least almost as great as the ones that uh, Neil Adams draws, and his superheroes look at least almost that good. And in fact, I would say in some ways better because uh, maybe his art isn't quite as dynamic as Neil's and maybe he wasn't quite as uh, uh, revolutionary. And he definitely followed in Neil's footsteps. You can see how uh, uh, Jose's artwork is very much inspired by Neil Adams. These are two men cut from the same cloth. They're both masterful artists. But with all the attention to detail that's gone into these boxes and everything like that, and yeah, sometimes they, they've used a logo or something that, you know, wouldn't have been around at that time. And I'm sure there's various reasons for that. This would not be the artwork they would have put on this package in the 1970s. And it's not because it's a bad piece of artwork. You can see yourself, it's a gorgeous piece of artwork. I would argue this is probably one of the the definitive images of Green Lantern. No, no, the reason that this artwork would not be the artwork that it would be put on this package back then is because it didn't exist. This was not a piece of artwork that was created until the 1980s. So they couldn't have possibly, unless they had a time machine, put this piece of artwork on Amigo package in the 1970s. Couldn't have happened. So I think they would have been better off using a piece of artwork from... Uh, Either Neil Adams, who would have been uh, probably the most recent artist to draw a Green Lantern at that time, 
uh, I do believe that uh, if they had have made this figure, it, it would have come out of the tail end of the 1970s. So uh, I think that the Green Lantern series uh, that Mike Grell was working on, it already started by then, the revival of Green Lantern, Green Arrow. So they could use Mike Grell artwork since he was the, the contemporary artist at the time, at least I believe he would have been. They could have used artwork from Gil Kane, the man who designed Hal Jordan in the first place and drew plenty of iconic images that they could have drawn from any number of covers or comic books or, or what have you. They could have, and I actually think this would have been probably the, the best piece of artwork to use. They could have used the artwork that was in DC's style guide that was actually from the 1970s, and I believe that that piece was uh, uh, penciled by Gil Kane and inked by Murphy Anderson. If not, it was definitely inked by Murphy Anderson, and he might have even penciled it himself going off of the drawing that uh, Gil Kane had previously done. Uh, I think that would have been the one most likely Migo would have used. So I'm not sure why Migo chose to use this admittedly beautiful piece of artwork, which I do very much appreciate. And, and I do think that this is an excellent choice of uh, an illustration of Green Lantern to put on an action figure package, like if it was any old action figure package. But of course, this isn't supposed to be any old action figure package. This is supposed to be uh, an action figure package as Migo would have made it in the 1970s. So, therein lies my dilemma. Do I like this piece of artwork on this action figure package? And it, it's a hard, it, it's a hard question for me to answer, honestly. If if I got to be real about it, because uh, I, I'm I'm just kind of split on it. What can I say? So, uh, it, it, I guess at the end of the day, great piece of artwork, but I question just whether it was the right piece of artwork to use on this particular package. Now, if they'd have done this in the style of, you know, the Carter figures, and this wasn't supposed to be a 50th anniversary and just a, 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 a new Mego action figure put on a blister card, like with Rachel Ghoul or Deathstroke or Flashpoint Batman or what have you, and they'd have used this piece of artwork to illustrate Green Lantern on that, you couldn't pick a better piece of artwork than this. So I'm not trying to disrespect one of my artistic heroes. Please don't misunderstand me when I say this. <laughs> but but I think they probably could have chosen a better piece of artwork for what this package was supposed to represent if that makes any sense it'd be like like if uh, if, if I went to make a, a it, well, let's say on their, their, their 50th anniversary Star Trek figures they're putting out if they put a picture of Zachary Quinto on the Spock box <laughs> It's almost like that. <laughs> so, but but don't let that my my nitpicking about that dampen any enthusiasm that you might have for this figure, which is a fantastic action figure, an excellent representation of Hal Jordan. And yes, the action figure itself, I do believe, is an excellent representation of how Migo would have done this figure in the seventies. Like, uh, they did not screen print this like they have with some of the other figures. You can see that there's uh, stitching where, like, the the green of the leotard is different from the black of the sleeves and the sides and the, the tights. That's two different types of fabric that are sewn together. It does have the paper sticker emblem uh, like, like old school Mio would have done. And uh, it, on my sample, it looks like it is slightly crooked. Again, like how old style Migo would have done. <laughs> the head sculpt is great. It's uh, it's definitely like I think better in terms of detail and likeness to the character than uh, the earliest of the Migos. Uh, I would say that of the vintage Migos that we've seen re-released so far in this line, it's definitely more in line with Captain Marvel. Whereas uh, I thought that was a great head sculpt. The other ones are. You know they're they're good for what they are, but not as good as what Migo was capable of doing later on. And it's definitely on a par with the head sculpt that they came up with for Barry Allen here. Now, uh, I do think that Barry's head sculpt is just ever so slightly better than Hal's. But that's not to say that Hal's head sculpt is lacking in any way. It's still a, an amazing head sculpt, but but Hal's is like a. Uh, 9.5 and 
berries is a perfect 10. So nothing really to uh, uh, complain about there. So uh, it, it's nice having uh, a hand that's a bespoke Green Lantern ring hand as opposed to just, uh, you know, slapping a green sticker on t- <laughs> onto a white hand. So that's nice. I do like that. I had seen where uh, a customizer had uh, put white oven mitt type gloves over the hands and had like a little Green Lantern sticker on the oven mitt to represent the ring, and I thought that was pretty funny. So uh, that was that was somebody who 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 knew what they wanted, and and what they wanted was oven mitts, and I thought that like putting that much effort into uh, something like that was actually quite beautiful. I, I, I love the passion of it. But me, I'm, I'm happy with having the, the molded hand there. And, you know, he has to have a molded hand so he can hold the, the lantern. Just like with uh, the vintage Captain America, he couldn't have worn oven mitts because then he wouldn't have been able to hold his shield. Uh, this Green Lantern would not have been able to hold his lantern if, uh, you know, if, if he had oven mitts. So that would have been impossible. So they made the right decision I made, as, uh, I think, as far as this goes. I guess we should be lucky that uh, as far as, uh, you know, this figure goes, they didn't go a full Captain America and just give him bare hands or like he had played flesh-colored hands with no gloves at all. But he had to have the ring anyway. So anyway, I'm very happy with the Three Lantern figure, but I've talked about him for like a half an hour now, and I think it's time to draw this episode to a, a close. Uh, hopefully I'll have enough energy that I can review some of these other figures that I have and uh, more that I have on the way. So we will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. If you want to participate in these live streams while they're going on, you can like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon, and that'll let YouTube know that you want to be uh, warned whenever one of these is starting. So I know I have lots of uh, people on YouTube that, I follow their live streams and uh, when it's somebody that I know I'm going to want a, a live stream and going to want to comment on and things like that, I make sure I hit the little bell so it lets me know. I usually don't do that unless it's a, a situation like that because then you have all these like like pop up, you know, the, the what do they call them, the push notifications. And I generally don't like those, but, but if it's somebody I want to participate in their live stream, then I want to know, obviously. So, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, look at these, uh, Love cuffs. Those are pretty cool, huh? That's actually like pleather. So I hope that doesn't wind up peeling. I probably, if it was me, I probably would have just made that out of spandex like the rest of the outfit. But, but oh well. Uh, you know, hopefully it won't peel, like I said. Anyway, that's it for this, this time. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.